How's it going guys, Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. So if you saw the animation I released last week, then uh, you might have some idea what we're going to be tackling. I released that animation because there's several things you guys have been asking me lately and I thought instead of making a tutorial and you guys not knowing what's coming up next and stuff, maybe I'll do an animation that had a few different things in it and then do a series of tutorials that address how I made it in that animation. Something like that. So today, we're going to be focusing on this part. Where you take an item, and you throw it, as you can see there. And then uh, we're going to move into how we did the teleportation, and how I did the somewhat uh, enchant-looking thing on the golden apple. But, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of this scene, and we're just going to cover the basics of how you would throw an item. So what I have here is obviously my Steve character with my skin and we're gonna have him throw something so let's go ahead and spawn in an item let's have him throw an egg why not all right so what we're gonna do in order to throw an object is not that all right we're gonna select the object and we're going to set it up how we need it so for this one we want it to be rotated we can do 90 degrees negative 90 doesn't matter and it's a little bit big, so I'm going to go ahead and scale it down a bit. Maybe about half size. And typically, you're going to want to have things that you throw spin or move in, in a certain way. So just as a thing that we're going to do to prepare for our animation, we're just going to go ahead and change our rotation point and try to center it out. As you can see here, it's on the very bottom. So I'm going to bring it down and... Around seven points is about right on this. If you're having trouble centering it up, basically what you want to do is count the pixels. So each square here is a pixel. So this is about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen pixels high. So half of that would be approximately seven, maybe about uh, 6.5. And then that gives you pretty good center rotation there. So that's uh, how you can kind of figure out how to do that. All right, so now that we've got that all set up, now we're going to take our egg and we're going to duplicate it. All right, so a lot of people try to get around this step. Uh, I've done a tutorial where I kind of showed how to throw an item before. And a lot of people want to do it like where you can animate the parenting. Unfortunately, as far as I know, you cannot do that. So you have to duplicate the object. So what you're going to do is duplicate one and parent it to your character. So let's just say he's going to throw with uh, his left arm because he rolls that way. So we're going to go ahead and zero out the position and set the egg up how we want it in his hand. Something like that looks okay. And we're just going to ignore this one for now. And just so we can kind of keep up with things, we're going to go egg hand and rename the other one egg free just so we can keep up with them a little more easily not really necessary just a little tidbit all right so basically you know it's going to be a, a typical i'm not going to go through the whole animation process of how you might would want your character to look when he's throwing an animation but we're just going to do a basic one here with the arm so he's going to basically just draw his arm back like so he's really going to rear back and wants to throw it as hard as he possibly can, right? So he rears back like this, and then you're gonna have him pause for a second. We're just gonna put another keyframe there. You could change this one to an instant keyframe and uh, whatnot, but I'm just gonna use this two keyframe method to time this pause here. So he pauses, and then we wanna have his hand fling forward. So we're just gonna take it like this, and uh, something like that. Maybe we'll just have his arm come down like that. So it basically just does that. Now, obviously, if you were doing an actual throw animation, you might would want it to look a little better than that. But we're not focused on that aspect this tutorial. So as you can see, he rears back with his egg and he just tosses it like that. Pretty simple. Uh, but of course, the egg goes nowhere and nothing happens. So what we want to do is pick a keyframe where we want him to let it go. So let's just say, eh, maybe right about there. So here's where we're gonna go and get our free egg. We're gonna make it invisible for all time, 
before this point in time. Right here is where it becomes visible. And at this point, we want to go ahead and match it up with our other egg. So let's go ahead and line this up real quick like, as quickly as possible. Try to match the rotations. Now generally this doesn't have to be 100%. Uh, if you look closely, this is actually a pretty easy one to do so it's not that bad, but if you look closely at the outline here, it's not 100%. It doesn't have to be super perfect or anything. You just want to be pretty close because it is a relatively fast motion. As long as it's just about there, you probably won't notice uh, much craziness going on. So at the same point here, we want to go to the egg in the hand and have it become invisible. So as you can see there, there's not a whole lot of difference when uh, when I do that. You can't really tell a whole lot's going on, but boop. So that one will appear. And if we back up, you will see his hand is empty now. All right. So what we're going to do is take this one and then we're going to animate our throw. So since this is the free egg and that's the one that appears, we want to go ahead and have it fly far away. So what you can do and what I did actually for the animation, uh, the Ender Pearl Quirrell, I just did this freehand, but I came up with an idea and I tested it out and it seemed to work pretty well of how you can kind of give yourself a guide. So uh, I'll show you guys how to do it with that as well. But for now, we're just going to create another keyframe and we're going to, you know, we got to see what the timing is depending on how far he's throwing it. Um, so it may need to come in closer or farther away. But for now, we're just going to move it out. Let's just say we wanted to throw it this far, maybe about just for the sake of even numbers, 230 at that point. And it's going to come down because obviously there's gravity. Of course, if you're throwing it at something and you want the egg to crack or something like that, you might not have that happen. So he throws it and it just shows up here. Um, so if we zoom out, oh my God, losing my scene. Here we go. So he throws it and, and that happens and it's kind of slow. So let's go ahead and move our keyframe back in and see what that looks like. That's not too bad. You would probably want it to go faster. Let's, let's make it go a little bit faster. Let's try about 40. That's not too bad. It depends on how hard your character's throwing, what he's throwing, and all that stuff. That would depend on how fast you need it to go, but I think this is a pretty good speed. So you basically have that. I mean, if, if that's all you want to do, you could just use that. It's just a straight-up throw, but generally you, there's an arc to it instead of just flying straight out and going straight. I mean, maybe if it was a fast ball, it would kind of do this, uh, but generally there's a little bit of an arc. So the simplest thing you can do is to go about halfway and lift it up. The only thing is that does kind of tend to create a little bit of a, a poor looking arc. See how it just kind of goes up and elbows away. So we're gonna get rid of that. Uh, another uh, thing that you can do here is to make it a little bit more realistic is spin it. So let's just say a few rotations, something like that maybe. What, what number would this be? 720? And then that way when it throws, it's a little more realistic like an actual throw because he throws it and the, uh, the egg spins. Right? It may not be that noticeable. It depends on, on how you shoot your scene, but that's another thing you can do. All right. So for the idea that I came up with, like if we want to make this an even better uh, looking throw. Now I could do this freehand, like I said, the way I did for the animation, but I came up with an idea to try to use something like this. I made this in Photoshop. It's just a, a little swoosh. You could make your own very easily. Just draw some kind of line that would give you an idea of how you want the uh, the object to be thrown and how you want it to land, right? So what I'm going to do is go ahead and resize this to kind of match where our thing is going so we need to kind of shorten it up something something like that right in there that looks pretty good let's just go ahead and make it an even 13 and what we can do is use this swoosh that i've created to animate our egg to go exactly how we want it to go so let's go ahead and get it lined up 
exactly. I feel like maybe it needs to be raised up a bit because of how high his arm is. All right, so we've got this template. So all we got to do now is try to get it to match up. So I'm just going to go about every few keyframes here and I'm going to raise it up and try to make it match that swoosh mark that I've got. And we'll see what this looks like. Now it depends, you know, I don't know. I haven't used this method for an animation. This is just an idea that I had and it seemed to work pretty well in a test that I did. So I decided I would include it in this tutorial. Uh, so it may depend on exactly how you do it and how well you keep up with it that determines how good it looks. Um, but we're just gonna try it here and see. So one thing you may notice is like as it goes, it'll try to start to do that straight line business again. So you're gonna have to go in between every now and then and line it up. And the good thing with this is the way we have it, since our rotation point is right in the center, we can just kind of line it up pretty exactly uh, every time and have it kind of stay right up there and uh, be able to easily tell what it's doing and uh, making sure it stays on the same track. So we can just keep doing this, just keep making sure it's up on our swoosh here. That one looks pretty good, so I don't know if we need another keyframe there. Here it goes down a little bit, so let's try to eyeball this and get it all going. Something like that. And then at that point it kind of just drops, and I don't really see that as being much of a problem. We'll see what it looks like here. All right. So now, now let's watch this. So obviously that's, that's a little bit of a quick drop there. You could, since we have all these other keyframes, we could probably uh, kind of correct this a little bit. Let's raise it up just a bit there. And let's see if we drew that out a bit. There we go. This, uh, this thing's bothering me, hang on one sec. All right, so now that we've got this all set up, let's see what it looks like. Whoop, doop. Now, uh, obviously you could have the uh, the thing animated here. We, we'll get into that in a second. I'll actually include that in this tutorial. But as you can see, that's a very, like a much more realistic looking throw, in my opinion. See how it kind of gives the arc and whatnot. Now, this is just a really quick swoosh that I made here. So it's not, probably not the ideal arc that you would want for a throw. It just was pretty close, in my opinion. So that's why I decided to use it. Um, but it gives you a really easy way to kind of map out your throw and rather than just depending on the the program to to work out the distance between the keyframes and and where the thing should be at any point in time you can do this and have it exactly you get a lot more control with this method so i'd really recommend you guys trying this out for yourself and see if it works for you um but yeah that's that's pretty much it for that so what we have here is when it comes down, maybe we want it to uh, to land and bounce. We'll just go with a simple land and bounce thing. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to change our, uh, we could animate it manually, but let's just see if we can do it easily. Uh, let's see, probably this one, the ease out bounce. And you don't really see much there because there's not a whole lot of keyframes, not a whole lot of time for keyframes to do much. So, Right there, you can see it kind of stops for a second. Uh, let's draw it out just a little bit more. Let's see here. So that that's one thing you can do. It really depends on what you're throwing and whatnot. Um, but yeah, you can have that happen. Uh, it depends on what you're throwing. That's That can be a much more usable uh, option for certain things, but perhaps not so much for this. So we're just gonna go ahead and leave it on linear. And let's see if we can actually animate it ourselves manually. So that's the basics of how you would throw something. So let's just say you're throwing something uh, that's going to hit the ground and you want to show it hit the ground and you don't want it to just kind of come down and just stick like that, right? So maybe we'll go ahead and have this and we'll rotate it a bit and have it kind of come forward just a tad. And then over the next couple of keyframes, we'll create a new one. And we'll have it roll backwards a little bit and come like this. And then one more and we'll straighten it back out. Let's make it 720 again, because that's what's straight for us. Something like that. And you get this nice little rock in motion there as it hits 
and the inertia kind of carries it over. All right, let's actually have it. Let me uh, adjust this here. It's not doing exactly what I wanted. So uh, let's draw this out a bit and let's have it do this one like this. So instead of uh, rotating before it even hits, it's going to hit the ground, doop, and then it's going to roll a little bit. It needs to come over maybe a little bit more. All right, there we go. I did some tweaking. Uh, but basically, you know, you can animate this where it comes down and it hits. And let, let's say it just hits flat on the bottom. And then it's going to roll a little bit that way and then teeter back this way and then teeter back and kind of end up right the way it started, straight up and down. So if we watch this back, you get this quick little thing there. Now, obviously you could use some uh, keyframe transitions and things to make that wobble look a little better. You can make it slower by dragging these keyframes out, whatever you need to do. But uh, that's a little way that you can have some of you know, some physics. It's not just falling and sticking down and whatnot, you know? So uh, that's pretty much it, guys. If you wanna do a throwing animation, we're just gonna have your guy with his item you got to duplicate it and just have him toss that thing and have it land and do a little bit of a wobble maybe. It's up to you however you want to go about doing your throw animation. Anyway, hopefully that's helpful. Hope you learned something. Hope it uh, answers your questions and you get some use out of these ideas. But that's it for me. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was helpful. As always, if you liked it, feel free to hit that like button, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends and your family and your pets. And I will see you in the next video.